Right, good morning, good day. Um, okay, let's uh, make, oh, drop something. Make some cables, so I'm gonna make a um, magnetophone input so that we can load some software on. And I'm gonna to have to buy some more of these from AliExpress. I'm gonna make yet another iteration. <laughs> I know someone's gonna get a chuckle out of this. Another iteration of the uh, RGB, but this time with another socket, five pin, and we will need to use the um, we will need to use the sheath or whatever for to for the ground because the ground is not on a pin. So, um, but first, let's do something easy. Let's open up the power supply and also check out the keyboard. So, from what I've read, there are four iterations of the hardware, and I guess from what I was reading, um, as they went on, it got you know cheaper and cheaper hardware. Um, so, like using a ULA or something. Um, so it made it less um, less upgradable, less hackable. So they weren't. So. Um, Apparently people weren't as interested in it uh, because they couldn't do easy upgrades on it. So it looks like we've got another, yep, this is number 28, little security uh, Play-Doh, number 28 this time. Um, okay, something's rattling around already. Okay, so three screws, surprise, surprise, flathead. Man, imagine if I'd gone to the Soviet Union with a Phillips head screwdriver, I would have blown their minds. Go, wow, what, what a innovation. Okay, so never been opened because number 28 security Play-Doh is still in place. I really did good on this one. I just need to really find the find where the spot is. There it is. So I'm assuming this is just going to be an iron core transformer and some diodes. And capacitor. Because actually it's pretty light. It's there's not much to it really, so it could even be a toroid. Oh no, okay. Ooh, some fanciness. Wow, okay, this is a bit fancier than I was expecting. Um Okay, so we've got some filtering as well on the or is that a safety capacitor? I haven't seen that before on, on these. Do, do, do. So this is what we've got. I don't have my glasses on. So 0 0.1 microfarad. I don't know if it's like an X or a Y class. Oh no, what's that going? So that's, okay, so we've got input output sort of thing. Okay, I'm not. I say I'm not a power supply person, so I'm not. I know the basics. Okay, that does actually have something on it. Uh, can't really tell. Can't turn it. I can turn it a little bit. Uh, point two two. Microphone, so you can use it like a, a X class or a Y class, or can, can't remember. One is what active to neutral, another one is uh, I can't remember. 
So what's this tiny little thing like? Like a transformer or something? Sorry, I can't see what I'm talking about. Got this tiny little thing stuck there. Tiny, 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 very thin wires. So, um, oh yeah, they are. I'm in maximum zoom here, so. So no doubt someone in the comments will be able to tell me because um, yeah, I'm off the top of my head. I don't know. I could probably I'll, I can go look it up in my big electronics book, but off the top of my head. Um, or is it a, is it a ferrite core or something um, for noise reduction? Okay, so this is the other side. So let's pull back a bit, and I'm just really oh, they're really fine wires here. They are like tiny. Um, and basically that's that's this is what's carrying the current really to this one here so I've got this kind of filter capacitor or whatever here between active and neutral then we've got are they actually connected so maybe may, they're not actually connected are they they're not electrically connected we've got we've got this tiny little wire that comes in here Let me zoom in again. So we've got a tiny little wire coming from active or neutral, whichever one it is. And then it looks like... So I don't know, is this one going out to there and then it's coupled like magnetically, electrically or whatever, not physically. Because then we're at the back here, or is it, this is coming in here, going out there, and this is coming out here, and then going out there. So I don't know if it's in this side, out that side, and then it's it's coupled, because I'm not really sure what this is for. And then it's into this capacitor, and then out over here, where the real stuff is done. Okay. So this is not what I was expecting. It's a lot more effort. Okay, that's where the rattling is over that side. Um, does it lift out or do I have to do any, undo any screws? No, no, it lifts out. Okay, here we go. All right. Okay, there's the big capacitor. There's the transformer. So yeah, so okay, so a bit of protection here which I've not seen before on, on this type of stuff. So that's 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 impressive. We've got our fuse here. That's more capacitors. We've got these two huge. I assume these are some sort of although um, if they were transistors then um, well, they could be good because normally you've got the back of these things is some sort of active part of it. Whereas if it was a linear regulator, then this is basically ground, so it doesn't matter. But hmm, and we have whatever. We have whatever. So, so this must be the heat sink. I don't know what these are. Um, hmm. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah, I'm a bit of a loss at a loss about what most of this stuff is because I can't really can't really see it. Okay, hang on. I'll be back in a minute. Right, so not to yeah, so I'm not really I've I've und, I undid the screw 
on um, this heat sink here, but um, can't really move it, so I can't really. If I have my glass, hang on, I've got the loop thing. It's uh, KT 8B9A. And what's the other one? A KT 859A. KT 859A. A KT 8. A oh, 59A, it's not a B. <laughs> Looks like a Cyrillic B, but it's a five. So KT eight five nine eight. Okay, I'll look that up in the. I'll look that up and I'll put that in the comments. Or well, not in the comments in the. In the video description. So. I'm not really sure what these two are. So there's a long copper. This plastic here is hiding a long copper. Long copper lead. You probably just see down there. So that's why that's all insulated. Um. But yeah, I'm totally puzzled. So they're connected to a heat sink. Got some heat sink um, compound there. Are they diodes or? Got a common connection here. And I should power it on and check voltages and see what, see what it's all doing. Uh, okay, so this common connection here is connected to that's the con common connection there, which goes over to here. goes to there which is a capacitor which is then connected into here okay so I thought maybe it was yeah I don't have glasses on I can't really tell so how's the fuse Oh, it's connected to, okay, and the fuse, okay, all right, all right, so, yeah, one of the AC inputs is connected to the fuse, I guess, but, yeah, so this common here is connected in via the fuse, so, could be, is it, A full a full wave rectifier, so a, a, not two diodes. Full wave rectifier, maybe. But you should have the transformer first. You should drop the voltage down first, and then rectify it, shouldn't you? Anyway, all right. Well, that's the power supply. Um. Surprisingly complex. I, I wasn't expecting something so so complex, to be honest. Um, I'm not going to use it. Uh, I'll put it, put it back together properly. I'm not going to use it because, yeah, it's just yeah, impractical. So that is the power supply. Let us look at the keyboard next. Well, that's supposed to be interesting. So I'll undo all the screws and I'll be back. Okay. All right. Written information looks like a 792 on here. Um, okay, that's a little beeper. I was trying to figure out where the um, little key clicking noise was coming from. Oh, this keyboard. How do I take the keycaps off? I think it just pops off. Okay, looks quite complicated, really. <laughs> Um, 
So yeah, so the, the caps themselves look pretty cheap, cheap plastic, but you know, it's good with the, um, there is, there is some texture to the, to the legend on it, but the key switch looks pretty complicated. Uh, da, 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 da. So I did read they were read they were read switches. There was a read switch at the bottom, so I don't know how much more I can pull apart without breaking it. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe that pops off the side like that. Uh, I need two pointy things. Maybe this is a clip. And that's a clip. Okay, that's a clip and that's a clip. I just need a third R and that's a clip there. Hmm. Well, not. Okay, I might fiddle around with this a bit. Oh, hang on. There we go. Is this some movement? So I don't want to do too much. I break it. Um, yeah, this is quite, yeah, I, I don't want to break them. I want to kind of show you as much as possible, but I, I don't, at the same time, I don't want to, because, okay, okay, so I think it is a reed switch, so I have had, that. there are some actually other quite good videos about the Robic on YouTube, if you do a search, ones that don't go on and on and on like me. <laughs> um, but what it looks like is we've got a, ah, yes, you can tell, <laughs> bit of metal's been, so this here is a magnet. Um, I don't want to get a bit of metal stuck in there. Hang on, let me just get a bit of metal out. So hopefully that's, so what we've got there is, you can see the magnet. So that there is the magnet. And underneath here, there's a, uh, a reed switch lying horizontally. So as you press it down, the reed switch closes and the key press is uh, registered. So that's just all tiny little magnets. Um, I don't know if I get the magnet out. I might be able to get the magnet out. Yeah, but that's how it works. So it's, it is actually quite, well, I get, I'm not a power supply expert. I'm not a, a key switch expert, but from what I've seen in other other machines, it's actually quite, um, quite a complex mechanism. Um, and because it's a reed switch, I guess it should just keep working. I am, uh, yeah, I think they're pretty, pretty neat. Um, yeah, so I hope you don't mind that I don't destroy it trying to pull it apart. But I see, I think I have seen other videos or pictures at least showing the um, a reed switch under there. So there we go. Um, that's the keyboard and power supply. So I've now got, oh, got to replace the power LED. <laughs> power LED and <laughs> your days are numbered, Mr. Regulator. <laughs> so um, now I'm going to keep the regulator on there. I want to see how hot it all gets. And well, we've measured the power consumption. It was just what 1.11 amps. So I just want to see what sort of improvement we can get. Anyway, first thing to do is to, well, next thing to do is to make up, make up the cables. So the the cassette cable is pretty simple. Let me show you here. It's pretty much ground, and then we've got input and output simples, um, and then that's the RGB I've got to make. So, but first I've got to work. And then I'll get to do this maybe at lunchtime. Maybe at lunchtime I'll come back and revisit this. <laughs>